Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Today we are going to talk about the Yamaha DJX2B, Groove Box or whatever I should call that thing. It was released in the year 2000 and it is the DJ oriented version of the DJX2 without the keyboard. Which is okay with me, because, fun fact, I can't play keyboards. Tastes differ, but the assumption made by Sound on Sound on the unit's release that the DJX2's designer simply vomited on the front panel of the original DJX and called it a day is not exactly far-fetched. Speaking of its predecessor, as far as I know, the original DJX was available in a keyboard version only and seems to have a better reputation, mainly because of a sturdier build quality and a more tasteful selection of sounds and patterns. The DJX2B was originally sold for £200, but is easy to find and very affordable on the used market nowadays. I bought mine for €35. Euros. At the first glance, the unit looks like a toy. Built-in speakers, a CD-ROM as the main controller and a bunch of dubious preset grooves and rhythms. We can find some pro features as well, like a resonant filter and a 3-band EQ. Unfortunately, the on-off button of the FX section is broken on my unit, so I have to stick to the pretty decent distortion until I figure out how to repair it or control it via MIDI. Given all that, it doesn't come as a surprise that there are quite a lot of people who hate the DJX2 like it asked them to play a Nickelback song during a minimal techno DJ set. You've already heard the DJX2B as a full-fledged sound module in our little intro tune. Could it be that this SpongeBob-shaped abomination is more than just an early Nazis plaything? Before we get down to the nitty gritty, let's use the machine as it was probably intended to be used, as a standalone live electronics gimmick. I feel kinda stupid using a 20 year old CD-ROM as the primary control for this obviously rather complex instrument. What is more, the patterns give me instant Y2K PTSD. Speaking of dated sounding patterns, the sounds of the DJX2 remind me of another controversial groove box from about that time. Let's hear the two in a direct face off. Enjoy the clash of the cheesy groove boxes. Move it! I might get some heat in the comments for saying that, but I prefer the DJX2 sounds to the ones of the MC303. It is also much easier to use in conjunction with external keyboards and DAWs. I am looking forward to using it as a MIDI controlled sound module. Verdict. The Yamaha DJXB is like the rundown rental car you just realized has a V8 engine under the hood. It is not only more fun than expected, it can even get you where you want to go. The patterns are barely usable and the unit's design made me ask myself what they were smoking back in 2000, yet I totally enjoyed the versatile and balanced sounding rompler lying dormant within this machine. As the music production lifehack expert that I am, I would recommend hiding the DJX2B in the lowest drawer of your studio rack, while using it as a sound module with your master keyboard and DAW on a daily basis. Thanks for watching, see you next time. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and subscribe and leave a comment what other kind of bad gear you would like to see and hear on the show. Yeah.